and welcome to another holiday live stream. I am thrilled to be here, kind of finding my regular groove Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. That's here in Southern Ontario. I already see from your notes on the chat, you are joining me from across Canada and across the world. I welcome you all to this episode where I am making eggnog creme brulee and thank you to organic meadow for providing the eggnog and we will talk about that this is a decadent dessert it's time to gear up for the holidays before i get into the recipe you know i have to say my hellos first hi mom hi esme it was great to see you this weekend uh cecile mary beth kathy bonnie of course i'll be popping by bonnie's later with some eggnog creme brulee to enjoy later. So let's get right into it. Oh, Wesley's joining from New Jersey, which I hope you had a delicious Thanksgiving meal. And now we're gearing up for Christmas. Creme brulee. It is not complicated. The ingredients are relatively simple. The technique takes a little bit of paying attention to, but it's not complicated. What I love is you don't need fancy tools to make creme brulee. You need baking dishes, but the rest are things you have on hand. A pot, a bowl, a whisk, and you are ready to make creme brulee. So this eggnog version is a combination of whipping cream and good quality eggnog, but I'm going to enhance the flavor. So you'll see the recipe. The full recipe is beneath you, but not beneath you, but beneath me actually in the window, uh, the video window. And you'll see I call for a cup and a quarter of whipping cream. There we go. And creme brulee is meant to be decadent and rich. If you're looking for something that's a little leaner, you would make a creme caramel, which is made using milk as opposed to cream. But I love that eggnog, which is Egg, the flavors in eggnog are cream and egg with a little bit of nutmeg, a little sweetness, and sometimes a little bit of rum. It can be rum flavoring or real rum, but that's what we're capitalizing on. So I'm putting in a full cup of good quality eggnog, and I'm going to heat this very gently. This eggnog actually has real eggs in it, so I don't want to overcook it or heat it too far on the stove. So I'm going to heat it up gently, but I am going to set the creme brulee with egg yolks. Oh, hello from Australia. We have people joining from truly all over the world. Now, heating up the egg, um, sorry, heating up the cream to incorporate it with the eggs will help it set evenly and quickly in the oven. You never want to start with cold cream or eggnog to make your creme brulee. It'll just take longer and you risk cook, overcooking the outside of your creme brulee before the center is done. So let's take advantage of this slow heat and build in some flavor. So I have, let me grab a little spoon here, vanilla bean paste because I love seeing the speckle of seeds in my creme brulee. If you don't have access to vanilla bean paste, this is two teaspoons. You would use the exact same measure uh, of vanilla extract. And if you have a whole vanilla bean, well, you can certainly use that too. You don't even have to use the full vanilla bean for this recipe if you cut about three quarters of it because one tablespoon of vanilla extract is the equivalent of one tablespoon of vanilla bean paste and one tablespoon of vanilla bean paste is the equivalent of one full vanilla bean, the seeds scraped out of it. So I've added that, and then to really highlight that eggnog flavor, whenever I wanna add eggnog flavor to anything, it could be a cookie dough, a buttercream, it's that combination of nutmeg, vanilla, and a little bit of rum flavor. So I'm gonna grate in some nutmeg into my cream and let that flavor steep a little bit. And the reason you do this with creme brulee working in the flavor is it only spends about 20 minutes in the oven. So it's not a lot of time for those flavors to infuse. So this gives us a little bit more of an advantage. And I'm just going to turn on, there we go, on low heat. Give it a quick little stir just to make sure the vanilla bean paste is worked in. And that gives me time 
to separate my eggs and take any questions that you might have about baking in this recipe. Oh, I see we have someone writing from Turkey talking about rice pudding. I've had the good pleasure of visiting Turkey in spring 2022 and I did have rice pudding there and it was delicious. I remember it. Um, oh, since Kriti is asking a good question, what's the percentage of cream? Minimum 30%. Here in Ontario, we have 35% cream. So you need that fat, fat content and richness to get the creaminess. Unlike a set custard, like a creme caramel that you turn out of the container, um, it's baked in, and that's made using a combination of egg yolks and whole eggs to give it more set. Creme brulee is meant to serve in the dish you make it in. So let me separate my eggs here. How's my, of course I've got my sweetie running the cameras here, Michael, how's this positioning? Beautiful. Okay, and of course I'm going to save the egg whites. With holiday season, there's so much you can do with them. Whether it's making a meringue to top a meringue dessert, to top a Yule log. If you're adventurous, you might be making um, macaron. I saw Raf, you were talking about making macaron. That would be great. And if you're just joining me, I am making eggnog creme brulee. I've got the cream and the eggnog heating with a little nutmeg and vanilla. Now I'm separating out my six egg yolks. Yes, it's holiday time. It's about those little extras. And making yourself feel good when you serve something special to your family and friends. Now my eggs have sat out for about an hour and I find when it comes to separating eggs, the white flows away from the yolk a little faster when the eggs are slightly warm as opposed to ice cold, but the yolk itself can be sometimes a little more fragile, so you have to handle it carefully. I know there are all sorts of hacks and tricks for how to separate eggs easily, but honestly, I find the good old back and forth between the two shells does the trick. But you'll notice, if you're new to joining the live stream, I always crack my eggs on a flat surface. I picked that handy trick up from an egg farmer who pointed out that if you crack your egg on a flat surface, you get a clean break with few sharp edges and no little pieces. So you're less likely to get shell in either your whites or your yolks, and it's easier to separate without risking tearing that yolk and having it go into your egg whites. So I'll keep my egg whites for later. How's everyone doing? Costa Rica, wow. My brother-in-law and his wife are in Costa Rica right now on holiday. I, okay, I've got my six egg yolks and I've also got six tablespoons of sugar. Now there is a little bit of sweetness in the eggnog that's heating, but not a lot. So you still have to add a little bit of sugar. If you were making a straight vanilla creme brulee, you would still use the same amount of sugar. Ultimately, it's the cream itself has a beautiful natural sweetness. And I think, honestly, the best creme brulees are ones that just deal with the simplicity of those good ingredients. I am adding a little bit of rum to really play on that eggnog flavor. You could add something else if you wanted to, like um, Grand Marnier or another spirit, or you can omit it completely. Don't even worry about it. You don't have to replace it with anything else. Now I'm whisking this together and let me take a peek at, oh, I can hear a little bubbling from my cream. So it's hot enough. I'll take it off the heat. Oh, Pat is asking a very good question. Don't egg whites have to be used right away for a recipe? Actually, no, they don't. Um, egg whites keep for at least a week, even a bit longer in the refrigerator. If you're not using them right away, what you can do is uh, separate each egg white into an ice cube tray. So one egg white, because it's about two ounces, fits an ice cube tray very nicely and then freeze it. Um, sorry, one ounce. Oh, I always get that wrong on these live streams. And honestly, I, it's, you yeah, think, I, you handle eggs every day. One egg white is one ounce, two tablespoons. That's why it fits into an, 
ice cube tray really well so you can freeze them and use them later or you can weigh them if you freeze them if you want to keep them longer um, and they do not change they whip up to the same volume if they've sat in the fridge and if you make macaron um, those egg white almond cookies a lot of pastry chefs like to use egg whites that are a little aged they dehydrate a little bit so you get a better skin and foot formation on your macaron um, <clears throat> Oh, Sanskriti is asking about bringing ingredients like dairy to room temperature, yogurt specifically. Um, just having it, you don't want to leave it set out too long, but when it comes to dairy, because ingredients of a like temperature combine together, if you pull it out and just let it sit out for about 15 minutes, that's usually sufficient. It's not like you have to heat it and risk splitting it. Right now, I'm slowly pouring my cream into my egg yolks. So I'm evening out the temperature a little bit. And then once you get a little bit of that cream and eggnog added, you can pour it all in. Now I was trying to be quite gentle with my stirring, but you can see all the bubbles that I have right now on the surface. I want to get rid of those uh, before I pour my creme brulee. This is where the details count when it comes to making creme brulee. If you want your creme brulee to brown um, to caramelize evenly when you add the sugar and torch it on top, you have to get rid of these air bubbles. So before I even strain it, it's sometimes easier just to take a spoon and pull away that foam or frothiness. Because that frothiness will not dissipate in the short time that the creme brulee bakes in the oven. And this just interferes with the torching, the caramelized sugar on top. Oh, and hello from Ger Germany. Thank you for joining us in New York. Thomas is asking, what is eggnog? That is an excellent question. If it's not part of your um, repertoire, it is a, a custard-like beverage. You enjoy it cold. Sometimes it's fluffy. It, it has cream in it, egg yolks. So it's cooked almost like a custard. Think of a creme anglaise, but not as thick. And then it's accented with nutmeg and a little bit of rum flavor. All right, now that I've got most of the bubbles out, and look at all that. Once this deflates, it doesn't amount to a lot, so it's not like you're wasting this. And now the next step to make it easy to pour, but also rem remove bubbles again and any other bits in the creme brulee, but the nutmeg and the uh, vanilla bean seeds will go through. I'm straining the custard. Remember, this is uncooked at this point. And now I know I'm going to have a perfectly smooth, silky custard. I might as well take one more moment to spoon off those last little foamy bits. And now, I'm ready to fill my creme brulee dishes. I'm opting for a flat style of creme brulee dish. This is more traditional because then you have more surface area for that caramelized sugar layer on top. But if you have a higher sided ramekin like this, it works just fine. The only impact is your bake time changes. Because this is flat, it only takes 20 minutes to cook in a 160 oven, 325 Fahrenheit where a regular ramekin, 150 mil, will take 30 minutes to cook because it is just that much more dense. And hello from the prairies. We've got people watching from the Philippines, the prairies, I'm assuming Canadian prairies, Illinois, this is great to see, Calgary. Oh, wonderful. Now I've got two baking dishes I've, so that I can fit all six. This recipe makes six creme brulee. Now something I've learned over time is when you put a ceramic dish in a metal pan or a glass pan, it slides around and you risk spilling your creme brulee as you're trying to get it from your counter to your oven. So what I like to do is one of two things. I like to put something at the bottom of it. So if you have a silicone mass, you can put that in the bottom of your dish like so. Oh, hello, Fernanda, from your office. 
Are you supposed to be <laughs> watching me right now? Or are you sneaking a peek, taking a break? Um, something else you can do is because you're submerging it in water, you can actually just take a piece of paper towel and then when you set your creme brulee dishes in like so, they won't slide around in the dish. And of course, this is underwater, so there's no risk of it burning. So you just want to double check before you start filling that your dishes fit. And I actually, to try and prevent any more bubbles from forming, and so instead of pouring from high up through the high-sided dish, I prefer to pour a little lower, closer to the dish, so I'm not creating too many more air bubbles. And then I'll lift, lift these carefully to my baking pan, like so. And I'm not quite done with these yet. I'll do two at a time here. Oh, Nicole, thank you for joining us from the Ottawa Valley. I do love that everyone shares where they're watching from. It's nice to know we have such a fantastic reach. And we all share the same love of baking. My last two. You can make your creme brulee the day you wish to serve it and chill it. You can make it a day, even two days ahead, but any longer than that, I find dairy will pick up other odors in the fridge and you'll lose that sort of clean flavor that you really crave in a creme brulee. I'm just going to top these all up very carefully. And try not to spill. Here we go, good. Every last drop. I'll pop these last two into my baking pan and then I want to show you one last trick. Making creme brulee is kind of like making cheesecake in that the, meth the ingredients aren't complicated, even the method is not complicated, but it's those little tips that will set your creme brulee apart from anyone else's. So now these don't have any bubbles, so that's not going to help me at all. I did a good job with the straining, but these, the first two I poured, you can see some of the larger bubbles that just snuck onto that final creme brulee. I want to get rid of those, so I just take a little bit of dry paper towel and you dab where the bubble is, and it either pops the bubble or just picks it right up. Just like so. There we go. So now these are ready for the oven. I've preheated it. Uh, as I mentioned, it's 325, 160, and the flat ramekins, again, I'll recap, the flatter style ramekins take about 20 minutes to bake, but always check your oven. Always good holiday baking tips. Set your timer two to three minutes before you expect things to be done just to see your progress. Maybe your oven runs slow and you have to let it go a little longer or your oven's running a little warm because you've had it preheated for so long and things take a little less time. Um, the bigger full-size ramekins will take about 30 minutes. And you can check the doneness because there's a little, when you shake the ramekin, there should be just a hint of a jiggle to it. When you take your creme brulee out of the oven, they will set and continue to set as they cool. So now I'm going to slide these carefully over. And I don't know that you're going to be able to catch this, but what I like, Michael, but what I like to do is before I put the water, if I put the hot water into my creme brulee roasting pan now, now I have to slosh carefully, get the water in the creme brulee without the two blending to the oven. So I like to open the oven door, pull out my rack, set the pans on the rack, pour the water right when they're sitting in the oven and that way they don't have any distance to go. we go. I have my tea kettle with boiling water. 
and you want to carefully pour that in, again, trying to avoid splashing into the creme brulee dishes. And you want that water to come up about halfway, three quarters. Can you? Oh, Ben Marie Cam. Oven Cam. Well, you know what? The small, I'll pull out the small dish so you can, the small pan. I'll try and be careful here. So you can see how much water. The oven doesn't like that I have the door open. So there's with the overhead cam. So the water really is only coming up halfway up the sides of the dishes. It just, it softens the cooking a little bit. I know, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Slide the rack in. Okay, and 20 minutes, they will be done. What you don't need to try and do is extract the creme brulee hot from the oven out of the water and to a cooling rack because if you're trying to do it with a towel and you get the towel wet, you're going to burn your fingers and then you might drop a brulee or you might drop get water droplets on it. So I leave those creme brulee to cool for about 10-15 minutes in the water. By that time, the water cools that they're easier to extract to a cooling rack to cool completely. And then you want to give them a chance to chill. When they're flat like this, they don't take too long to chill. And here's what they look like. And that beautiful golden color really reminds you of the eggnog. And these are fully set and ready to torch. And I love this part. I would love when I was in, um, I need my tray. I'm going to pull these off. Um, I would love when we would do weddings and banquets. M Michael and I cooked together for years and years. Um, when a wedding or a, a special event would book creme brulee because you get into a rhythm and when you get to torch 150 creme brulee, it's just lots of fun. It really is. Now, something to keep in mind, when it is time to torch, you only want to caramelize your creme brulee right before you're ready to serve it because if you do it a day ahead and put it in the fridge, that sugar will liquefy and end up being sticky and you want to create a nice crunchy exterior. I'm going to start with two. Where am I putting my creme brulee? There we go. Something to keep in mind is you do not want a torch on a surface like a wooden cutting board or this is laminate, it could melt. So put your creme brulee on a baking tray. Even don't put it on your plate because the plate might react to the heat and crack. And so leave a little space between them. Let me just tidy my area here. Hello from Weyburn, thank you for joining us. I've got just regular granulated sugar for torching and I leave that up to you. You can use turbinado sugar, but I find it's a coarser grind and it actually takes longer to caramelize. If you want to use uh, an organic or a brown sugar, pulse it in a food processor to make it finer so that it melts faster. And oh, hello everyone. I don't have plans right now, Orel, for visiting uh, the Balkan, but I, would lo I love travel. So any opportunity to visit and tour would be great. And I love seeing all your comments. It's so fabulous. Michael, we have 225 people watching right now. Great. It's fantastic. Thank you for joining us. This is the fun part. This is what we look forward to. Now, I have found over years, instead of putting a thick layer of sugar and trying to melt through it, it's frustrating when you go to eat a creme brulee and it's caramelized on top and you crack through and then there's still some unmelted granular sugar underneath. So what I like to do is put a nice even layer. How's my framing on the overhead can? Okay. You're okay. But you tell me if I need to move these around. No, you're perfect. And so a thin layer, and I give the sugar a little shake so that it spreads to coat the entire surface of the brulee. And now,
always torch away from you. Keep your hands clear of it. You can do this in an oven if you want. You set the oven to broil. And I still like to follow the same technique. Shear layers, melt it for about 15 seconds, pull the tray out, another layer of sugar. So I'm less concerned about browning as I am melting because now this melted sugar, when I sprinkle the next layer of sugar on top, is going to melt that sugar faster and then those two layers fuse together. And then you start caramelizing. We'll get right to the edges there. And now for the next layer of sugar. This is a, another reason I like to use a baking tray so that way it's easy to clean up the sugar that gets everywhere. And this is when you really start seeing that sugar turn into caramelized pearls. Yes, yeah, that's true, Michael. They, um, Michael just reminded me how the original style for doing creme brulee was you would heat an iron torch and you would put the sugar on the br brulee and basically brand the br brulee with the hot iron. But it's that beautiful contrast between the crunchy surface and the cool interior of the, cu um, the custard we love so much. I think this can use one more layer. I have tried before actually making caramelized sugar stovetop and pouring it on top. You get too thick of a layer. It's a lot to work through when you crack through it. It lasts a long time, but it's a little too crunchy. Oh, and hello, Seabreeze from Newfoundland. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> oh my says, they're scared to use their blowtorch. Blow it's still in the package. Well, I hope I've given you some confidence. This is a butane-fueled torch. So it's easy to recharge and refill. I'll let that one, I think that's going to be mine. little bit of ooh bubbling up I'm sure you're getting some amazing close-up shots aren't you Michael's smiling so <laughs> there we go oh I just love it I, I something so simple and so delicious I'll be honest when I go to a restaurant Ordering creme brulee, it, I always go for the creme brulee because you can really tell if they're paying attention to the work they do when they make a delicious creme brulee. It's so satisfying. And so check, because it will be hot and you'll find, because you've just caramelized the sugar, it will set quickly because of the cool custard underneath, but do give it a second. Oh yeah, it has solidified. Um, and, Oh, Michael wants a hero shot of it before I dive, um, dive into it. Oh, Amy, you're asking a good question. Can you do this in the oven on broil? Yes, you can. So you set the oven to broil. You want those custards pretty close to the element, but do what I did with the, th the sheer layers. So I put three thin layers of granulated sugar and let them really melt. One melts the other, melts the other, and then it caramelizes more evenly. And Judy, I'm glad you think this would make a great dessert for a dinner party. And how festive, because at the heart of it is eggnog. I think it's amazing, and I do. I'm an eggnog fan. I really do like it. Around this time of year, I think it's delicious. Did you get a beautiful shot? Okay, well, now, do I hold this close to the microphone so you can hear the crack? Yep. Oh. I absolutely love that. Oh. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That eggnog flavor comes through beautifully. You've got the cool custard. 
under that caramelized layer. It's not overly sweet, but I'm picking up on that balance between the nutmeg, the vanilla, and the rum. Mmm, this really is a decan decadent dessert. And you said it, Judy, this is ideal for a dinner party because everyone gets their individual dessert. It's also ideal as a dinner party dessert because you're making it ahead of time and you get to do a little performance at the end with the torching. I really hope I have given you the confidence to make a delicious creme brulee with a twist. I hope you'll include this in your holiday menu when you're having friends and family over for dinner. And now, Amy, um, oh, now you know you have a blowtorch, you can do this, but you can also do it with the oven, so you've got this. Um, I wish you a happy couple of weeks gearing up to the holidays, and I am not done yet. I will be back this time next week, and I am making something altogether different. This is more your brunchy, big holiday sweet bread. It is a raspberry jam Danish wreath, and it is something else. It is one of my favorite holiday smells now baking. I seriously do make it um, every Christmas. It's now become a staple, so I hope you'll join me next week right here on Oh Yum, same time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you to Organic Meadow, <clears throat> pardon me, thank you to Organic Meadow, the eggnog, the cream, good quality ingredients is what makes a difference. And I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me, everyone. You're the best.